Okay, so yeah, the idea is you get quick access to everything you could ever need in a busy practice. All the most important functions are accessible from icons, menus, and key commands. So even the beginner can quickly get to grips with the program. So uh, Radar Opus, you know, has a familiar tab to layout. So like all internet browsers, you can, so, you know, you see up here, I've got different um, tabs available. So over here, I've got my repertory tab. This is actually like an internet tab there. Just gonna stop your video there. And, you know, we'll go through this all in a bit more detail in a sec. Just wanna hide, the video, hide that thing. There we go. Cool. I think we're good now. Right, so um, let me go back to my, yeah. So while you're working, you can move seamlessly between the patient file. That's this window that I'm looking at now. Um, so this is where you would normally enter the, you know, the details. You can take notes directly in the program. And the nice thing about it is that um, it's, it gives you full GDPR protection. So any information saved in the program is uh, encrypted and you know it can't be read um, apart from within radar opus so you know it's one major plus of using this software it means you don't have to worry about um, how you're how you're storing notes because you're you're covered and that means that you know you have to enter in the password to get into the program and change that password every three months so it's basically been done so that we're covered and you're covered okay so yeah, the product range goes from entry level through to you know advanced professional packages so entry level is what i call radar opus core and that is uh, you know quite a basic uh, program gives you just the functions you need and the repertories you need to get started um, and when you're using um, something like that you can add on any like individual authors you like it could be robin murphy or books by farouk master or a repertory by Jeremy Sher. There's lots of options, essentially. So let's just go through some of the icons. So if I click on repertories, uh, you'll see that this table of contents opens on the left. So in general, the, the program is always divided into this column on the left with all of the, um, like a table of contents for the repertories in this case. And then on the right hand side, is like the content area where you have the different tabs available for navigation. So in the repertories, we've got synthesis, which is like our main repertory edited by Frederick Schroens. So, you know, when you click on these drop down arrows, you get a little, you know, you see the chapters within the table of contents. So you can, you know, move around. So you say you want to go to stomach, you can move straight to stomach or abdomen. Hi there. I'm gonna um, stop video. So okay, it's done. Okay, if you can unmute yourself as well, that would be great. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, this is where all of the repertories are. In you know, in this package, I've got all of them, but uh, normally so many unless you buy one of the the, the big professional packages. So here's Robin Murphy's repertory, all the chapters, icons available. <clears throat> so you can double click there and it will open Murphy's repertory. Okay, so <clears throat> let me just show you some of the other things that we have in the repertories column. So we would have something called concepts and I'll come back to that uh, a little bit later if we have time, but essentially it means that you can type in like uh, a clinical term, and it will uh, di redirect you to where to find the most appropriate rubric, because we're always trying to um, convert what you know what the patients say and what the diagnosis is into something that we have in our repertory. And then you know later on, um, if it takes your interest, there's also uh, families of remedies here, so you can look up miasms or. Um, kingdoms of remedies so you can look at things from a taxonomical standpoint there so <clears throat> just a, a little word about synthesis then why why would you use it um, when you're used to using Murphy um, so I would say that it's basically 
Synthesis represents, you know, a collaborative effort um, between different professional homeopaths. So you get additions, especially from George Vitolkus and people like Roger Morrison, Fruit Master. Their clinical additions have come in to um, to synthesis. Um, yeah, so that's one of the main differences. And you know, over here, you can click to see which authors made the additions, and that means you can kind of trace. The, the root of um, where uh, where those remedies have come from and why they've been included. And the other uh, really useful thing about it, I'm just going to navigate now to a rubric. So I click on the binoculars there. That's the like navigation window. Then I can click to go into the mind chapter. If I just type, say to delusions forsaken, you can see here there's a load of cross references and that's something that, um, as far as I'm aware you, you wouldn't get in Murphy's repertory so it can give you idea of um, other rubrics that you might want to consider when looking up this one and there's numerous ways of taking symptoms you can just drag and drop into the clipboard then when I click analysis you'll see there's my rubric and then if I want to go back to the repertory I can just click on the repertory tab here to go back so you see I've got all these different clipboards here um, if I want to make a different one active I can just hold the alt key then click on any clipboard like that so this is useful if you want to use the um, the hotkey or the shortcut so if you want to learn shortcuts you go up to help you look up shortcuts and uh, the window appears and from there you can learn what all the shortcuts are so that's that's really useful it makes working the program much quicker so what you can do from here just if you wanted to say study this um, quality in the repertory instead of just dragging the rubric across you can use this little take button you click the kind of pointy arrow next to it and you say take and specify the options then you take all the cross references all together take and they'll go into the rubric that the clipboard sorry that I had selected here so then I've got like got myself a nice uh, sort of um, clipboard where I can look at everything to do with for, the feeling of force I always forget that uh, zoom takes over your uh, shortcuts so um, <laughs> I'm gonna just gonna unselect all those there we go you can all hear me okay still yeah yes good 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 thanks so it's quite interesting seeing you know carcinosin pulsatilla so you can see which remedies are most um in you know a majority of the different cross-reference rubrics and you can you can do that quite quickly and um that's quite a nice feature and a nice way to learn the repertory and where the different rubrics are so from here you could click the drop down arrow to see the other remedies in those rubrics and let's say you wanted to you know consider pulsatilla um, you can right click on it here and you could say let me just see the other family members of pulsatilla so i could choose the ranunculaceae family and it would then limit my repertorization to that family so you can see ranunculus bulbosa is also has some rubrics there in staphysagria so that's just a quick introduction to um synthesis I'll just delete those rubrics <clears throat> okay and you know one of the other nice things you can do within any repertory actually so let me go to Murphy so I click up here on the tab the little drop down it shows me a preview of my different repertories so I'll go to Murphy and if I click here I can look up the occurrences of a remedy so let's take um, Episolve so I type the abbreviation and then click OK. And it does a nice extraction of um, the number of times that remedy is found in the different chapters of Murphy. And that gives you a really good idea of, um, you know, which, which symptoms are most, uh, sorry, which uh, affinities there are for that remedy. So it looks like liver is a big affinity there. And this works really well in Murphy's repertory because he's got so many chapters, kidneys as well. So that's another you know unique feature that you get 
in the program. Okay, so the next icon along is um, references. Actually, before we do that, I'll just show you some of the other small repertories we have, um, like a FATAX concise repertory, a very useful clinical repertory. We also have uh, the clinical repertory of Clark. So there's lots of potentially you can add these, um, you know, like a bundle of classical repertories into your program as well. And that can be very useful when you're like differentiating remedies, especially. All right, so if you if I click up here on references, then I get you know a whole massive list of all my materia medica. Basically, anything that isn't a repertory goes here. So it's divided into materia medica, keynotes, comparative, therapeutics, provings, of which there are many, journals. And this is the thing: if you if you buy a more expensive package, you get a lot more reference material. Okay. So it just goes to show how much is there. So um, over here we have some cases and I just thought I'd quickly show you um, how you can make additions into synthesis as well. So I've opened a Materia Medica book uh, with some clinical cases. And from here I could say, you know, find something. I feel tightness in my breast. So I could then use a quick keyboard shortcut and then go to synthesis and then look for chest constriction mammy and then use the same shortcut and now i've added that remedy directly from the book and if i click here it shows the actual passage from the book so you create a link between your materia medica and your repertory so it's a very nice way of um, adding to the repertory and that's, uh, you can only really do that in synthesis. So it's another reason to use it if that takes your interest. You know, if you're at a lecture or something and people are giving you, um, you know, new additions to remedies, then you can put them straight into the program as well. Okay, so yeah, with references, I'm just gonna um, open these up again. Let's say, you know, because there's so much in here, we give you an option to search within references. So I can search for Murphy and you can look directly in the table of contents uh, for you know, any remedy, or you can just open the book with a double click and use the binoculars there to navigate through. Hi there, new arrival. Could you please mute your microphone? Thank you. So we can look up any remedy from in the book. And you can see it's quite nicely laid out. It's got the correct use of italics. So the other thing is with Radar Opus, you can search in books. You don't have to just um, you know read through them and that can become very powerful. But we'll get to the search function um, very shortly. So the patience is, um, the screen that I started with is actually a patient, but I've, um, you know, I've sort of been, you know, put my presentation in there. It's basically a, a pretty fully fledged um, text editor. Um, let's just see. It's a search. Uh, practice management. Yeah, so you can store all your patient data safely, as I was saying. You can grade and tag symptoms. So up here let's say this was a symptom and I wanted to make it um, italic, I could click here and then it becomes a, a new color or bold or underlined. And I'll show you some case examples in a minute. So yeah, you can save prescriptions, pathologies, potency. You can save everything in here if you want to be really fastidious about your, um, you know, your practice and your note taking. You can record allopathic prescriptions, vaccinations. So up here, you can say what vaccinations they've had. Um, tests, any medical tests. You can evaluate remedy response. Um, you can attach pictures. And up here, I've attached you know, a PDF. If I click here, it'll open all the attachments that I've made. So you could attach the patient's um, questionnaire, 
or um, if you took photos of a uh, skin uh, eruption, you could attach it here. Uh, if you use mind maps or some other sort of um, application, you can make screenshots and, and save them all in there. Okay, so that's a little introduction to the patient file. Um, and then I'll just quickly go through these other icons here. So remedies just basically gives you a whole list of remedies. And um, let's say I looked up something like Alcaria, double click, and it opens the keynotes. And these keynotes are basically made by um, a Dutch homeopath called Eric van Wurzel. And he worked with George Vitalkus very closely in Greece. So it's basically, you know, George, George Vitalkus style keynotes and um and they're, they're very good so from this page you, you have the main keynotes you can look at the families so you can say show me the related remedies for calc complementary remedies there or look at the bowel nosodes that have a similarity to calc okay and then there's lots of other things you can do like you can <clears throat> just go straight to Google or Google Images and then you know it's probably more interesting when you're doing you know looking at a plant remedy or something but so that's basically our keynotes page and you from there you can directly search anywhere else in the program so you could say, show me calc in all references. They, it's gone to Murphy because that's the last one I looked in. Okay, and then from here, you can view it directly in the search window or you can double click and it will go to the, that point in the book itself, which means you can, you know, you can make it bigger to read easier. You can also hide all of these toolbars and that gives you a little bit more space. So that's just a one click operation there. Okay, so, and then over here, families, it's if you wanted to look for, you know, like a miasm or a plant family or a group of minerals, you could um, look for it here. Let's see what I've got. So let's just put a few more um, rubrics into my clipboard. So I'm just going to go to and pull in some rubrics. Um, Anything we'll do for now. Let's get go to the generals. Okay, so you can see it's quite quick to navigate around once you're used to it. And I just click on my clipboard. Let's say I wanted to look at um, anything to do with calcarea, calcium and compounds. So I right click here and I can limit the analysis to anything with, with calc. Okay, and then I can delete that just as easily. Okay, so you can see I'm building up a bunch of tabs over here. That's the way that I navigate. So that's just like, you know, author information there. So I'm going to just close some of these down um, as we're not using them right now. And that's good practice in the program. Otherwise, you can get a bit um, overwhelmed with everything. Okay, so <clears throat> then we've got to the search area and the search. Um, icon. So you can search directly from up here if you were looking for something. Let's say you were looking for mastitis and then you press enter twice and it searches for mastitis. So by default it's looking in the um, current document only but I'm going to say um, show me all documents. So it's now looking in all the repertories and all the Materia Medica for mastitis. Okay, and from there, uh, with just one button, I can extract a graph of that search. And, you know, no surprises for those of you who know your therapeutics, Phytolacca has been found the most um, often when just searching for that term. But if I wanted to look at, say, Lacaninum, I can double click on the column there, and then it'll open the search again and show me all of the, you know, the rubrics or all of the places it was found in the Materia Medica. Okay, so that's one use of the search function. Um, and it's, you know, although basic, it's, it's incredibly powerful. So let's say I've got um, mastitis there. I'm just gonna 
okay let's say i wanted to search for um something else so just keep, you know, keep it simple here and search in clinical terms so appendicitis let's say i don't know how exactly how to spell it i can just put append and then put uh, an asterisk there and then when i'm ready i click here to search again okay and then when i click on the um, graph button it not only finds um, mastitis but it also finds appendicitis and then so what i've got there is like the graph and here the search and i've got one tab two tabs let's say i want to add another one and in this case i want to um search something slightly more complicated so more than one word so i'm going to enter the advanced search and it sort of guides you a bit more through the process so let's say i want to search for inflammation i'm just going to put the asterisk and then return in the gall bladder return and then up here because i'm searching not only in repertories but also materia medica i need to set a word proximity so i'm going to say find inflammation in gallbladder within four words of each other then search and then you can see there's fewer results and then i go for the graph again and you can see it just builds upon each one one upon the other until you get some more specific results so it's another way of repertorizing quickly just using the search tool okay so i can click back to my search and if i want to clear it i use the little rubber icon let's say i wanted to look up one of those remedies that came through there so um let's say mag foss so remedy mag foss i type the abbreviation press enter then go for search in all documents so you can see loads of results coming through so one thing you can do is to um sort of nuance this search a little bit more so let's say i'm going to search for only the um sorry bold and underlined symptoms now so okay and then just relaunch search there so you can say then okay i'm going to go to murphy and then you get to see all of the you know clinically confirmed symptoms at a glance and let's say you wanted to for your homework or for research um let's take well you can even just take all of these rubrics so i do command or control a depending on whether you're a mac or windows user drag those across to a clipboard and even though it's 131 you can see the uh, number going up fairly swiftly and then once it's ready i just click on my clipboard and i open that there control or command a to select all i just sort them again then i right click copy the symptom text then open a word file and then do a paste and there we go for if you're doing homework so now i've got you know the magfoss um bold type symptoms from from murphy okay so it's nice and that you can use it in that way to help with with work okay so i'm going to delete those now so just giving you some ideas of the power of um, using the search function all the different things it can do um, let's click on the little blue icon there again re-enable those degrees and i'm going to look for the small rubrics now so rubrics less than let's say less than eight remedies click ok search again then let's look in one of these smaller remedies maybe um, smaller rubrics sorry smaller repertories losing it so we're looking in clark's repertory for some of the small rubrics okay you can also search for families which i think we'll skip for now you could also search in um, chapters or pathologies so let's say we wanted to look for a case that had aneurysis enter um, to load that and then search in all documents again and then you can just do the same thing before looking through you can extract a graph and it will show you the remedies so you say oh okay let's look at what causticum has and we find a journal entry for a case 
okay so this you know this search really works best when you do have um, some materia medica in your library however even if you're just using uh, Murphy's repertory and materia medica it's still going to be really powerful so let me show you a couple of reasons why let's say okay I've got Murphy's repertory and I want to look in the clinical um, chapter I can drag that up to my search area click here so you see clinicals gone in and let's say I wanted to put in uh, vaccinations as well put that in my search area <clears throat> And then let's search for a remedy like um, right? Type the exact abbreviation, it should have a full stop on the end in our program. Then here where it says A to Z, now I'm gonna select the current search area. And boom, I've got all the clinical um, entries for Nature Mule, of which there are many. So again, I might wanna nuance that. I can right click the remedy, say, okay, just lose the plain type. Okay, search again. Still lots of results there, so maybe let's lose italic. So this is a way you can work to, um, you know, when you're doing a differential as well, or just research. So you can see all the strong clinical conditions um, of Nature Mule. Okay, so that's a whistle stop tool of the search function, which is like the central hub of the program. So um, let me just see if I've missed anything here. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. You can turn symptoms from Materia Medica into rubrics as well. So let's say I want to look in Murphy's Materia Medica. I've got the book open and I'm going to go for a search of. Um, Pretty um, common symptom. Sorry, I searched in the current area. Go for open references. Let's go for a slightly more interesting symptom. That's not in there. In that typical, um, let's look for. Else. Okay, so there's 134. Um, remedies have been found in there and if you want to quickly see the remedies you can view the summary and then you'll see them here and from this um, page of results I can right click anywhere and then take all rubrics into a combined new rubric so you see them all coming into the, the next available clipboard and they're um, going to put 134 in there there it is so I just need to rename it now I think it was allergic and we've got 79 remedies there um, to do with allergies according to uh, Murphy's book okay so it's um, incredibly flexible how you can turn any materia medica into a rubric and uh, really is um, a great feature so any questions at this stage I can check the chat let's see um, I need to go back to, let's see if we've got any questions, if I press escape, ah, oh, there we go, let's see, eight there, chat, okay, it's people go, I cannot see your screen, sorry, we cannot see, does it include the most recent edition from Murphy, that would be the meta repertory, and in that case, um, no, it doesn't. Uh, he hasn't released that to any software company yet because, you know, understandably he wants to sell the book first. So, um, yeah, as soon as he, you know, wants to work with us to give us the files, we'd be, we'll be working on that. In the analysis, why are there different color shadings? Okay, so let's just, um, boop. okay, so different color shadings in the analysis basically show you know you can change the colors according to your preference so up here you click on a little cogwheel icon and that will always open the preferences there so you can change the colors and you get to show the degrees as well so it's basically showing you whether they're plain italic or bold or underlined and um you know i just like to keep mine nice and clean but you can yep you can see just the degree should be able to yep 
or uh, both, or you can add a shadow, you can show grid lines, etc. So uh, there's lots of different options for personalizing the program according to your wishes. I'm just going to make this thing stop popping up. Oh, I see you chat. Okay. Oh, Maria can see me. Great. Nice one. You can use the program on multiple devices, computer and iPad. So basically how it works um, by default is you can use it on one computer um, and we give you a software license for one computer and you pay if you want to use it on additional computers. And the reason for that is that, you know, basically in the past people used to, um, you know, have several um, keys for the program because they were cheap, you know, available for cheap and then they would sell them on to people. So they you know, were trying to, you know, survive as a company. So that's why uh, if you want to use it on more than one, you, you would pay for an additional license. In terms of the iPad, it's a separate program. It's much more simple. It's just the synthesis repertory and it's available through um, the App Store or Google Play. Okay. Yep, training. So basically, you know, we're doing a webinar now. We can do, we can do more of those by by default. I give everyone who buys the software from me an hour free, and then after that, you can carry on having one-to-one -one lessons if you want um, for you know like an hourly rate. Um, but we do have like a million videos on our website, um, and that's a good way to learn for some. Uh, to only pay once for the license. <clears throat> so yeah, you, you pay once and you own a lifetime license. And basically uh, this, sorry, last year, we, we introduced our first paid update for um, like 10 years. And that was required if you were using um, Catalina because it's 64 bit. So um, the only reason to update um, is if you wanted to use the latest Mac operating system. Otherwise, you you can stay with what you've got and then no need to pay. So basically, generally, it's like our aim is to only ever release a paid update every two years and you don't have to um, do that if you're happy to stick with the computer you've got and the OS that you've got. But however, if you want to keep um, up to date with all the latest Mac and Windows, eventually, you know, we'll have to ask for some money um for the update but the last update i was only 49 pounds so try and keep it really uh, affordable we know that you know as a profession it can be hard to um, make ends meet so you know we always try to reflect that in the prices soon very soon we're, we're launching a rental option where you can just rent the program as well so that will be available what happens if you get a new laptop? I would need to install on my work laptop, so I'm at the mercy of when they decide to upgrade it to you soon. Okay, so if you get a new laptop, basically um, at the moment you contact us, you say, I want to transfer my license. We say, yeah, that's cool. Our support guy comes online on your program, takes your license off and puts it onto your new one. And um, basically in the, in the next version, we're going to build a tool that allows you to move the license yourself. Okay. Um, a trial for Yep, yeah, you can have a trial for 15 days. Um, you can download it directly from our website. So um, I'll put the link in um, for that, like now, shall I, in the chat? That'd be a good idea. Okay, just loading it. Demo. Okay, so you can load the demo and what happens is you get it for 15 days and it's basically the same as the program if you were to buy it so you know if you do buy it afterwards you can just um, put in a new activation code and you've already got it installed which is nice and um, oh, it only sent privately hang on I want to send it to everyone there we go there's the demo link yeah yeah the license is for one installation but you can buy a second license okay um doo -doo -doo. and if the laptop breaks no you don't lose everything you always back up so that every time you quit the program um it prompts you to make a backup and any other time you would wish to make a backup you go up to tools database backup so you back up absolutely everything you store it on your cloud or um on an external drive 
several places really is best. And then whenever you reinstall, uh, you just restore your backup and um, everything should be good. So if it breaks before you've had a chance to move the license, essentially we know that bad things happen. So you know, we give you like, if that does happen, we would give you a free replacement once, but because it costs us money to replace them, you know, if it kept happening, we would have to then charge for the new software license. Okay. So, and you know, if it was stolen as well, it'd be the same, it'd be the same thing. So I think we'll, we'll carry on and I'll answer some more questions shortly. Thank you for all of those. Right. So where was I? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I think I've showed you these things. So I think probably it would be best um, to show you, you know, the example of actually working with a patient in the patient file. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to open my patient list and then go for, I think just go over here. All right. Let's do, let's open a patient, clear all clipboards. No. Okay. So here we've got <clears throat> an actual patient file and what, what you can see here then is, oh, that's my last consultation. So that's number three. So I'm going to get rid of that, go back to my first consultation. So by default, it goes to your last consultation, which is obviously what you would want. Um, so basically up here, you can enter um, the chief complaint, which I didn't do, uh, very naughty. Um, and then you just start typing and let's say you um, feel like it's an important symptom like I did here you can you know you just hit the number four and it makes that like an underlying symptom so it doesn't necessarily like put it straight into the um, clipboard for you but it helps when you come to then look at the case later so you can see I've highlighted things that I felt were important and then later on uh, when you come to analyze the case you've got a nice feature where you right click and then you sort the symptoms so you create your own hierarchy of the case essentially and that then shows you straight away which things you're probably going to want to repertorize um, so this these this kind of functionality is like part of the pro package or the optimum package so you know just just to let you know and it's not you know it's like a nice extra basically rather than a fundamental part of the program so let's say i wanted to um that um, repertorize some of this. So let's just go to the search. I'm seeing fever and press enter. And that should search there. Let's try again. Okay, and I'm gonna go change that to search in all open repertories. So I've got Murphy and synthesis there. So um, I'm gonna use synthesis because I'm more familiar with it. So there we go, there's the rubric that I want. So I just found another search, I just pick that up and drag that in. Go back to the patient, so cough. And then again, you don't have to finish the word, just do an asterisk, press enter. So cough rattling, so I'll find the big one and then there. And back to the patient, uh, so from it like enter I must have clicked into a different part of the program so you call vomiting during aggravates so this is the way you can you know go from the patient via the search into the repertory so you cough sorry cough like line it's particularly on the back. Okay, and so uh, there we go. So you can see that it's quite easy to move around and use the search to find the symptoms you're looking for. And that's you know one of the ways you can work. And then when you open the uh, clipboard there. 
you can sort of um, change the intensity of the symptoms. You can change the grading there to match your understanding of the case and what's important. So let's say this is really important symptom, this less so. So you just click on the uh, rubric and type the number. Let's say this is um, super important. Yeah, cough, lying on back aggravates. Yeah. So that's just a simple way of grading the symptoms. And that's particularly useful when you open um, a different type of analysis tool. So we have modules in the program. And if I open the Vitolkas expert system, it gives a different view of a case. So rather than just looking at the, um, you know, the standard view that we have here, is that loading? Yep. It'll open up and it'll show you some lots of different options. So yeah, it's sort of brought out antimonium tartaricum, which was the remedy prescribed. Um, and then, you know, some other remedies that were not so high up in the normal analysis. So we look at, yeah, Ipecac was quite a lot further down. So it, it, it's basically done that because, you know, this symptom here, vomiting during the cough, is marked as four in the repertory and four in the patient. So it kind of matches the intensity you give the symptom to the um, intensity, yeah, the intensity of the remedy and the patient are matched, essentially. So this is a really useful tool um, when you're working, you know, working clinically. That's just to give an idea of the different modules that we have. Then, you know, there's a shop icon which will take you directly to our web shop. Um, go away, please. Yeah. Takes you to shop, which is fairly self explanatory. But really, you know, if you ever want to buy anything, you can, you know, come to me and I can give better deals. Over here, you've got bookmarks. So, you can bookmark your favorite areas in the program. So we've got Murphy Clinical. If I want to go there, I just double click. So let's say I wanted to put in a new um, clipbar to go to, a new bookmark, sorry, to Constitutions. I right click on it, go to Bookmarks and add, add the bookmark there. Okay, and you also get a history button, shows you all the different places you've been and you can navigate going backwards and forwards through the history there. And the analysis will take you to your analysis. And then there, you've got various options. Um, so you can change your repertory view to something like the classics or just a Boja Boninghausen. So it's like because synthesis is built out of all those smaller repertories, you can always take it back to um, different kind of views within so if you were sure this is an animal remedy you can change it to animal remedies okay let's um let me show you the maps next so this is a sort of there's lots of these um maps <clears throat> got quite a big selection here and it's kind of for like from more contemporary homeopaths most of this but there's some really useful stuff here like Patricia Hatherley's got hints for lactation problems here so mastitis you know lacumanum and lacaninum um, and Farouk Master has a nice one here on lac remedies so this is a more like thematic part of the program if you like but you can also look up um, things to do with the kingdoms so if you wanted to look at mineral you could look at a periodic table there and let's say you were sure it's uh you know column two like calcarea oh there you go didn't do anything in that case and you can look at um other kingdoms that's not working say so plants as well different plants, you could look at the roses. So, you know, there's these extra things that um, give, you know, a few additional tools, if you like, the Anne Shelton's element theory is available. So I will go to some, see if there's any more questions just now. 
Where's all that gone? There we go. Ah, we got two. Okay. A searchable index for the thematics. Yes, there is. Yeah. Thanks, Use. <laughs> so Usoft is the name of the company. Um, I'm Luke. Um, believe work now. Can you please send a recording link and price info? Yeah, sure. A searchable link. Yeah, yeah. So you can search in that way. So there's a few things you can do. So um, let's say you wanted to get a little memory jog here. Uh, so you wanted to search for like vulnerable was a theme that you wanted to look at. So you can just type that into your search window and you could go for searching all documents to start with and just see what you find. So various books will come up and it might be you look in Shulton and the elements and from there you say I want to take everything Shulton says is uh, to do with vulnerable and so you right click here and you make a new rubric out of it and then you just rename that and then you can look here at all the remedies where that was an issue either in his uh, materia medica or cases from that book and you could use any book or if you were really sure about it you could like combine them all into one um, the other thing that we have is a new module called the family finder and you can open that and do the same kind of search so see if there's anything for vulnerable here so yes and click here to search and in this one um, you've got the bivalves or mollusks so they've come through in her work so here are the themes too vulnerable it's the one that's been found. The fungi are also there, according to Anna Vavarka. So this is much more, you know, a modern way of working and you can use it to, um, you know, complement a normal repertory analysis. So this one has remedies and families in it. So from here, if you want to see the family members of the bivalves you can look there and she's got a kind of map here so um this is something you know probably need a little bit more time there is a whole video actually of me and Anne talking about it a 60 minute video on our on our website so i can show you um where all our videos are if i go to our main website there you can see demo available if i go up to video We've got like a, an academy section of the website. So you've got different filters here. You, should, you could say, show me the starter videos. And it will show you things that are to do with getting started. Or you could just type. So if you wanted to, you know, look for families, then here are all the videos to do with Anna's family finder. Or if it was the Vitolkus then you've got some videos here on the Vitolgus system. And likewise, when you first uh, buy the program, you get a welcome screen, which I'll try and put up here. Welcome page. Mm. And this gives you links to like YouTube playlists. So um, yeah, we have a Facebook group too, which you can come on and ask questions. So, you know, if you want to learn the basics, you click there. You'll open our YouTube and you'll go straight to the playlist. Um, so this is the first one, how to drag and drop rubrics in Radar Opus. So it's, there's no talking on it. It's just a nice quick video showing you how to open repertories and then do some of the stuff I've been showing you today. Okay, let's just, and then it moves on to searching and using the patient file. And there are translations available if English isn't your first language. Yeah, and we've got the Facebook group with um, close to 2,000 members now. Uh, that's open the wrong one. But um, yeah, you can join that. As long as you're logged in, you can join that and uh, ask any questions. And we try and put interesting stuff on there um, pretty regularly. 
So yeah. And um, yeah, I've kind of, I reckon like that's probably enough to show on a first, um, first sort of webinar. It's, uh, there's quite a lot to take in. So I will see if there's any more questions. So let me, oh, resume share. Let's see. Yeah, the family finder is um, an optional add-on. Um, so yeah, if you're already using the program or if you buy it and you want to have it, then um, contact me and say, I'd be interested in that. And um, yeah, that can be, if you're buying like a package and you want to have like an add-on in there, then um, you know you can always sort of knock a little bit of money off the price and um, put it into a bundle for you. So I think what I'll do is um, I'll stop my screen share um, and I'll pause.